Hello guys, how are you? Uh, it's been a while, but I uh, have a bit of time to make a quick video. Uh, I've been working on a latest project uh, involving a, a DC to DC converter, especially of the low voltage input into a high voltage output. I need it for a specific application, and uh, this is the front end uh, to that application. Uh, my requirements are uh, to take a uh, low voltage from a battery bank, maybe 12 volts or 24 volts, and basically uh, convert it up to a high voltage DC that could be fed to a, a next subsystem that could be used for uh, something else. So uh, the converter is uh, shown on the video. Uh, it's of the uh, push pull uh, isolated type. Uh, it takes about 24 volts input and steps it up to uh, 180 to 200 volts DC. Uh -huh. As you can see, I have uh, four banks of uh, MOSFET switches for each leg of the center tap uh, primary transformer. And uh, on the secondary, I have uh, this irregular uh, full wave rectifier using uh, ultra fast. Uh, uh, fast recovery diodes and uh, basically pass it through a smoothing choke and uh, an output filter capacitor. Um, the MOSFETs I'm using are, uh, let's see if we can get that close, STP160N75F3 from uh, ST Micro uh, Electronics. They are very low RDS on, high current, low voltage application. Um, uh, around 3 milli, uh, milli ohms of uh, RDS on so conduction losses are very very minimal most of their uh, losses are actually uh, uh, with the switching losses but uh, uh, enough with the description of the circuit uh, it's straightforward uh, so basically I have it here built up so this is the DC to DC converter Let's see if we can get that focused as you can see, I have uh, four banks of uh, switches on each side of the leg of the transformer. The voltage is applied in the middle of the center tap transformer. The transformer is a high frequency transformer. Let's see if I can get some light into that. So just give me a second here. Okay, so there it is. Uh, it operates at uh, 33 kilohertz, uh, and basically uh, it's uh, 1 to 10, so the primary is 1 and the secondary is 10. Uh, so, um, uh, so that's basically it, and then uh, there's uh, ultra-fast uh, recovery diodes there for rectification on the secondary side of the high side of the transformer. There's the output choke about uh, 9 milli henrys of output choke and then I got some uh, filter capacitors there okay and then I also have some input capacitance here about 7 milli farads of capacitance at the input to store enough energy for the uh, uh, fast switching of uh, the MOSFET so I would be able to release energy quick I have a load here uh, the load here is about uh, 500 ohms be able to load it to about 64 watts and then after that I'll load it uh, put uh, 75 ohms uh, power resistor there and load it maybe close to 400 watts as well the rated output of this DC to DC converter is 900 watts uh, should be able to do it easily uh, here the PWM controller that I'm using is SG 3525A uh, also from SD Microelectronics it's very popular uh, it's very common in a lot of uh, DC to DC converters um, use here uh, I think they are MIC 4422YN from uh, microchip they are low side MOSFET drivers a pick of 9 amps so I should be able to uh, switch those uh, MOSFETs easily uh, so yeah okay so let's uh, do a quick demonstration uh, this meter here will uh, see the measure the output uh, the high voltage DC on the secondary side of the transformer uh, this uh, scope here will measure the uh, secondary side transformer on the secondary side which is on the high side 
um, I on top uh, because the output is quite high the peak to peak output is high so I'm topping it off here from a voltage divider so whatever you see on that scope sh you should be able to uh, so we should just uh, need to double it basically here this fluke meter here this bench meter here will measure the output current into the load and I'm feeding uh, my source is uh, this uh, uh, 30 amp 20 uh, uh, no, sorry, 20 amps, 30 amp, uh, 20 amp, 30 volts uh, power supply. Uh, so should be able to uh, provide enough, uh, enough juice to run that uh, DC to DC converter. And here in this uh, scope here, I'm measuring the output of the MOSFET gate drivers. As you can see now, because um, uh, the power supply is off, the, uh, the duty cycle is 49%. But um, once we turn it on, depending on the load we put on it, the duty cycle will change. And uh, we'll come back to see that accordingly. Here I'll measure one, um, one side of the uh, drain of one of the legs of the transformer. And on the other side I'll measure the output DC, see how clean that is basically. Alright, so here we are now. I'm just going to quickly turn it on. So, let's just put your eye... And there, there it goes. There we go. So as you can see, we are putting at uh, 181 volts DC. Uh, is the secondary side of the transformer. So whatever you see in there, it's just around 240. But you need to double it because uh, I'm topping it off this half of. Uh, those resistors so the measurement should be doubled and you can see around 32 kilohertz it's designed for 33 kilohertz operation and uh, here's our output current into our load it's uh, 0.355 amps and uh, here is uh, one of the drain waveforms is on the bottom channel one uh, typical waveforms you see on a push-pull converter and uh, there you go. The channel 2 measures the output DC and it's very clean and it's on 50 volts per division so we have about uh, three and a half so close that's about 180 so we have a little bit uh, about three and a half and as you can see sure enough the duty cycle changed and did that steady 36% now at uh, the 64 watts okay so I'm going to do a quick efficiency calculation. So what we have is 24.2 volts in at 3 amps and 180 volts out at 0.354. So I'll do that calculation really quick and be able to tell you the efficiency of this transform this uh, converter at this uh, load. Okay, so here we are. Uh, this is efficiency of the DC to DC converter uh, as uh, shown 180 at uh, 0.354 and 24 volts uh, so if we scroll that 24 volts at uh, 2.9 amps as seen here so about 90% uh, of efficiency so that's very good that's more than I'm, what I'm looking for uh, yeah so uh, what I'll do now is uh, basically change the load I'm going to change it to a power resistor, right now it's 500 ohms, but I uh, should be able to change it. I have a 75 right there, it's one of these big guys here, should be able to use the 75 uh, ohm uh, load and uh, be able to calculate uh, about to 400 watts of load. So, okay, so let me just change the load and I'll come back and power it back up. Okay, so here it is. So here's the big load here. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, see if I can rotate this. So you'll be able to see. Kind of upside down, but uh, 75 ohms. So we'll be able to load it so to around 400 watts. So and then calculate the efficiency at that load as well. The rated output, like I said before, is about 900 watts. So here we go.
Let's power that back up again. See if it's gonna hold. I've tested it before, so it worked. So let's see. Okay, actually, <laughs> we're kind of current limiting right now. Uh, as you can see, my power supply cannot support it. It's actually reached its maximum current, so 20 amps. But uh, as you can see, it's still uh, not quite 180 at uh, 143 volts uh, out. And as you can see, we're kind of limited. It's not really the real output. I'm outputting at 1.9. So really, this this is not a real test since uh, my power supply is current limiting. So I need to get a higher power, uh, higher current power supply to test it. So I've actually reached it, <laughs> and as you can see, my controller tanked up at forty nine percent. So that's the maximum duty cycle it is able to go to. Yeah, so yeah, so if I had a higher source, I should be able to load it uh, all the way till uh, 900 watts. But uh, we can do this quick calculation actually. How much how much watts we're pushing out at the moment? Actually, I can feel the heat on this guy already. So 145, 145, let's put this on the shot. 145. Multiplied by 1.944 amps, so we are pushing uh, about uh, 280 watts. Let's see if we divide it by the input. The input is 20.2 at 16.2 volts, and uh, as the output was 1.945 at 145. So call that 146, but. So divide that, just not real uh, test since it's not the, the rated voltage of uh, the, the rated voltage input. So, but just do a spot calculation here, 16. And uh, we get around 87%, but really not really uh, a good test since uh, my power supply is uh, current limiting as you can see, but yeah. You can see the resistor is actually to start to smoke right now, so I'll stop it. But uh, yeah, uh, if you have any questions regarding uh, this DC to DC converter, you should be able to answer some of your questions. If you have any questions for me, how I built it, how the transformer is designed, especially uh, the transformer is the heart of uh, this DC to DC converter. So uh, yeah, should be able to help you out. But uh, yeah, so this is a quick demo of. Uh, a converter of this type, but uh, let me switch that off because the uh, resistor is heating up quite a bit. Alright, maybe I'll sh I should come back some other time uh, once I get uh, another power supply with higher current and I should be able to test it fully to its capability. Yeah, actually the primary, uh, as a side note, is designed to handle about 41 amps continuous, the primary of the transformer. So should be able to uh, easily push uh, close to 900 watts easily. Yeah. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys around. Take care.